Hello, my name is Brother B. Brown, and this video is about John McSweeney. This is John McSweeney's total self-defense system. If you're like me, you probably always wanted to learn how to fire a gun, or uh, learn how to chop off the head of a bandit, or learn how to smell the wrist of a woman. Well, all three of these things you can learn by watching John McSweeney's total self-defense system and you can become a total badass just like John McSweeney. It can be combined from that outward windmill which has speed and power with the strike and of course you can add a knee shot. Now I can turn and fire all the way to here. Now you're probably thinking, this guy looks really cool, but can his total self-defense system really help me survive in a life-or-death situation? Well, take a look at this real-life scenario. What you've just seen could happen to anybody. That's right. What you've just seen could happen to anybody. Anybody could be attacked by an alleyway bandit waiting outside of an elevator. This could happen to you. Do you want to know how John McSweeney so easily defeats his enemies? Do you want to know how he maintains his strong and healthy physique? Well, it's all available on one tape and I'm going to tell you all about it. Outward We're going to talk about combat karate. Inward blocks. You tell him to stop. Gun play. Coming, you may have to fire. And tiger moves, my favorite. You're probably thinking to yourself right now, I can't wait to find out more, but you have to. Because I have to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video. That's how YouTube videos work. And the, uh, the sponsor of my video is my friend Solomon. Thank you for sponsoring this video, Solomon. Uh, good luck to you in your upcoming legal battles. Um, I know you are innocent, and um, I, no matter what your family says, um, I know you are not a pervert, and uh, th those pictures did not belong to you. So, thank you. Uh, thank you for sponsoring this video, and let's talk about combat karate. Now, karate is very, very cool. What makes it so cool is that not only is it very effective, it's also easy enough for a child to do. But McSweeney teaches real combat karate. Not meant for children, because children don't do well in combat because of how small and weak they are. When you're in a combat situation, one of the first things you should do is punch the other person really hard. And for that, you need to know a power strike. This is a course in the power strikes of combat karate. We'll cover the principles utilized to gain explosive hitting power. What are some of these strikes? That the leopard palm strike with the base of the palm hitting the skull in a circle. You can do it wide or short. Be a chop. The hand chambered back so there's no give, hitting the Adam's apple. A circle for power. The leap hard palm as well as the chop, which harnesses the power of the circle, are only two examples of power strikes. There's also the upswing. Upswing to the jaw. We get a full 360, that gives us great speed, knockout power. Hard stop punch, side fist, not turning. It's like a ramrod, in and out. 
in fighting, it's always important to have a good stance. Because if you don't stand correctly, you might fall down and hurt yourself. Boxer stance. You're probably already familiar with the boxer stance, but have you ever heard of the horse stance? Or the bow and arrow stance? What makes fighting so difficult is that while you're trying to punch the person you're fighting, the person you're fighting is trying to punch you. One way to get around this is to fight somebody who can't fight back, like a child or a cripple. But another is to learn how to block the enemy attacks. But how do you do that? Of course the answer is windmills. This is an inward windmill. And from this inward windmill we get blocks. Someone punching at us, blocking. Someone kicking at us, we block. From the outward windmill, the outward circle, we have such blocks as a block against a club or a hook. Of course, it's one thing to know about these things, but it's another to use them in a combat situation. That's why you need to develop spontaneous, spontaneous reaction. reaction. And you get spontaneous reaction from drill and drill and more drill in the basic strikes. Over and over and over and over and hit it, hit it. Drilling or getting drilled is always more fun with another person. Thankfully, John McSweeney has Paul. Paul will come on and show me now. Here's Paul with a club in his hand. And uh, you can get a little closer, Paul. Now he's gonna simulate, and we're gonna do this in slow motion. He's gonna simulate an attack on my head with that club. I block with that outward windmill block. So you have to check out the laws in your own state. However, I have personally trained women who have been raped and carry handguns because they said it'll never happen to them again. Whether it's legal or illegal, they could care less. They say no one will ever rape me again. A woman living alone or with children in a crime-ridden neighborhood where there have been home invasions. These people have handguns. Some of them have shotguns. How about people who live in a crime-ridden neighborhood and they have a business? The business has been robbed. I've known people who have been robbed and beaten, pistol whipped, even though they gave the money. These people tell me it'll never happen again and they keep a handgun. If you're scared of fighting somebody in a hand-to-hand -hand duel, you might want to consider shooting them. Now shooting another person might sound easy and even fun, but it's definitely not easy. For example, what kind of gun should you use? In the movies, Dirty Harry takes a big 44. This happens to be a 45 auto, but he's got a big 44, a cannon, the recoil of which would knock your head off. You don't want to use a gun that can knock your head off. And you also don't want to use a gun that's too complicated. You're going to use the revolver, all right? I recommend the snub revolver for self-defense. For citizens, it can be carried in a purse or a pocket. For policemen, the same way, or policewomen, the same way, or in a holster. The reason I like the revolver is simplicity. Simplicity of function. All you do is point, pull the trigger. The weapon is always loaded, there's no safety to worry about. When a gun is in your hand, the last thing you should be worrying about is safety. That's why when John McSweeney has a gun in his hand, his finger is always on the trigger of the gun, because he is always ready for battle. One, two. If there's just one target, always burst of two when someone is firing at you. If there are two people, you fire to the left, and center, again and back so it's one two two one if there are three targets you fire one two three and then back again one two three what you're seeing is point shooting which is a type of shooting where you also count points here's a hypothetical question what if you fail your background check because you have a history of mental health 
Well, you can still have a knife. No one will stop you from having a knife. Get a knife. The beauty of this little knife is that if your life is ever at stake, you've got a weapon to defend yourself with. A small woman should carry this, or a woman, any type of woman, even if she's strong, should carry a knife if she's afraid of the neighborhood she lives in or she's afraid of circumstances. Now, I'm not a small woman or any type of woman, but I am afraid of circumstances. Thankfully, John McSweeney taught me how to use knives and circles to defend myself. These circles, I can also protect my face and throat with my other hand. So these circles are effective. From the circles, I can go from a circle to a thrust. Circling and then thrusting in. Now the thrust, use the palm up, you have a tighter grip, more control. Don't have the palm this way with the blade pointing down. You have weak control. It's an unnatural move. Always thrust with the palm up, in and out. You circle, then thrust. A woman to protect herself against rape. That's what a knife is all about. It says self-defense is violence. It's violence against violence. Self-defense has nothing to do with turning the other cheek. If you want to turn the other cheek, you'll die, right? If you want to live, you have to defend yourself. The basic principle of the British common law is the right to self-defense. When you cannot defend yourself, you basically give up your right to life itself. You're like a lamb waiting for a wolf to devour you. That's why I always say, be prepared, carry this little pocket knife, learn how to use a handgun if the circumstances demand it. We discussed some of the circumstances before. If you're disabled, if you're a small person, and you're up against a gang, a gang attack, you don't have a chance unless you have a handgun. Excel four. Inhale back. Exhale forward. Use great tension. The universe is conscious of itself, and our bodies are the vessels of this consciousness. Unlike most matter in the universe, we experience, we feel, we observe ourselves, and we see our small roles in the universe. But the greatest adversary to experience is time. With time, all experience becomes null. With time, our bodies expire, and we step back into the void that we came from. It is a losing battle but a battle we need to fight nonetheless. By keeping our bodies strong and healthy, we stave off the nothingness, the void. That's why when I wake up, the first thing I do is tiger moves. Savage beauty. Look at that powerful body, strength, grace, magnificent form. How does the tiger manage to keep himself at the peak of physical fitness for his entire life? He doesn't lift weights, work machines, perform calisthenics or aerobics, and he doesn't jog, yet he can tear the head off a man. His power comes from his own exercise system, far different from man's and also far superior. It is the ultimate exercise system, which I call Tiger Moves. The tiger follows a training system which does no harm to his body, is highly efficient, conserves energy, 
And to top it all is very simple. To exercise, the tiger does nothing more than stretch with great tension every time he changes posture or when he paces. The inner resistance he uses is so powerful, it actually builds muscles. Simple, isn't it? Not only simple, but highly efficient. Tiger moves, the best and most natural exercise system man can use. I'm John McSweeney, and I'm gonna cover seven of these basic tiger moves. I have never seen a tiger because I don't live in the jungle, but I have seen my cat do the seven tiger moves, and my cat is pretty strong. Number one, the barrel squeeze. Inhale back with tension. Exhale forward. A side view. A back view. The shoulder roll. Rolling forward slowly with tension so you feel it in that muscle. The secret of tiger moves is to think into the muscle you're going to work. Even though I'm working forearms and pectorals and back, I'm thinking into the deltoid muscles of the shoulder so that I'll make those shoulder muscles grow, that the fiber muscles, the fibers in the muscles will grow. The wrist twist. Flex and hold. Come forward with tension. Slowly turning the wrist. The secret of this exercise is in the wrist twist. Turning of the wrist all the way back, coming forward and all the way in, flexes the triceps muscle. This is the muscle of the upper arm that we're working right now. The pull down. Come down the center line. That's important. Think into the muscle group, the inner pecs. Breathe out and breathe in alternately. The high reach. Now don't make this a yawning stretch. Use tension. Try to reach for the stars. Reach as high as you can with tension, great tension. The stomach roll. Flex, force it down. Come up. Now the majority of excess fat in the male is usually in the stomach abdominal area. In the female it's usually the excess is in the thighs and the buttocks. So men have a tough job keeping their stomachs flat. We have to have some excess fat. Dieting to an extreme is not good. And the knee bend. Think into those thigh muscles quadriceps, the hamstrings, think to the knee joint, you're going to strengthen that knee joint. In addition to these exercises, the knee bend, to develop the legs, I recommend walking. Walking is one of the best exercises all around. It especially develops the legs, keeps excess fat off the abdomen, develops the chest, the cardiovascular system. So I recommend that you also do a lot of walking. I don't recommend too much running because it's very jarring on the body. This is what the gym industry doesn't want you to know. You don't need to have a gym membership. You don't need to run around like a lunatic. These seven tiger moves are enough to maintain a strong and healthy body, just like John McSweeney. By following McSweeney's self-defense, you're going to be able to maintain a strong, healthy body and to protect it throughout your entire lifespan or until you become disabled or fragile and weak. John McSweeney was able to maintain his body in a healthy and safe way right until his fatal heart attack uh, in 2001. I believe simply that his heart was too big for him. He was too good of a person. He wanted to give too much to the world. John McSweeney, you are my hero. I'll leave you with one thought. 
It pertains to nations, it pertains to the individual. First a warrior, or all else is folly. That's the end of the video. If you like this video, you can like it. If you didn't like this video, you can kill me. Come to my house and kill me. Those are your, those are your two options.